Welcome to the weary, yearning for rest. Welcome to the lonely, who long for friendship. Welcome to the mourner, who longs for comfort. Welcome to the one who feels worthless and wonders if God cares. Welcome, sinner in need of a saviour. Tillibutri Baptist Church opens wide her doors with the welcome of Jesus Christ. The ally of his enemies. The defender of the guilty. The justifier of the inexcusable. The friend of sinners, welcome. Good morning. Morning. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Elaine. I'm one of the elders here at Tillicutry Baptist Church. And I'd like to welcome you all here this morning and to those who are watching live at home and to those who'll be watching later on YouTube. I hope that you feel blessed by joining with us this morning. You can get all the details of what's going on with the life groups, house groups, prayer meetings on our weekly bulletin. If you'd like more information about all that, just please speak to one of the elders. Um, can I remind you that there's the families and, faith, families and Faith Prayer Meeting tonight here at the church in the back hall at half past six. On Thursday the 11th, it'll be um, a funeral for Andy Wilson and then afterwards at the cemetery, Tilly Cemetery. Andy was Jamie's dad and he was a lifetime member here at Tilly Coutry Baptist Church. We will be beginning a new topic today, Pray As You Go, which will be brought to us by our own Gida Meeting. And next week, Dee will be continuing with the theme with an all-age service. Let's pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, you're the one who leads us from darkness into light, from captivity into freedom, from anxiety into peace, from despair into joy. Yet we long to break free, choosing independence, convinced of our own wisdom, forgetting your love and grace. Forgive us. Draw close to us, embrace us once again in your loving arms, and enable us to follow you in worship and grateful service each day of our lives. Amen. Hello, good morning, church. My name is Dee. And uh, I'm one of the leaders here at Tillicoutry Baptist, and it's my privilege to welcome you here online as well as in person. Um, we are going to enter into worship together, but before we do, um, I'd like you to um, breathe in really deeply and breathe out. And I'd like to do it again. Do it again. Breathe in and breathe out. And now I'd like to invite you to stand if you're able, uh, stand with me and I want you to take another God-given breath in and when you breathe out this time, say Jesus, okay? So breathe in, Jesus, and breathe in again and at this time I want you to say thank you, okay, let's breathe in. Thank you. And let's try it all together. In Jesus. Thank you. Now, I don't know what kind of week you've had. It may be the worst and most awful week ever, uh, or it may be the most awesome week. It may be a week to remember or a week to forget. But let us always remember that when we come into the presence of God, this is a holy thing. This is a sacred thing that we have the privilege to be able to do. So let us remember to be thankful for every God-given breath. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you. Just remain standing and we'll sing together. There's a theme running through all of the songs today, and Dee's already alluded to it, that life um, is full of ups and downs, but more than just ups and downs, it can be full of real highs and real difficult lows and the songs really are an encouragement to us um, to think about that in, in different ways as we go through the service. So the first one is Blessed Be Your Name which encourages us to continue to bless God's name in good times and in bad times. He talks in the, 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 <coughs> the verse about being found on a road marked with suffering and still being able to say Blessed be the name of the Lord. So let's sing this together.
Jamie and Zara to come up and join us. And we're going to sing together. <coughs> Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and to heal and to minister His grace. or two the young people are going to go out Um, but before they do I just want to read a little passage which all of a sudden I've lost even though I was there earlier and here we go Um, it's a little passage about Jesus blessing the children so I'm just going to read this and then pray for the children and the leaders before they go out one day some parents brought their little children to Jesus so that he could touch them and bless them But when the disciples saw this, they scolded the parents for bothering him. Then Jesus called for the children and said to the disciples, Let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth. 
Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Let's just pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you loved and welcomed the children and wanted to spend time with them and bless them. And we thank you for the children that you've given us in this fellowship. And we want to welcome them too and we want to bless them by providing good things for them to do and to enjoy on a, on a Sunday morning. So we thank you for those uh, who are going to spend time with them this morning. We pray for the leaders and the helpers that you would give them yeah, a good time with the young people and help them to, uh, to recall the things that they want to share and to teach them well. And we pray for the children that they would enjoy what's been prepared, that they would have fun together and that they would learn something more about you and your love for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if the young people would like to go through the back with those who are helping today, that would be great. sing another couple of songs now um, when peace like a river attendeth my way and this song also talks about very much huge ups and huge lows um, but it talks about peace um, that can be found in Jesus and we are reassured of that that Jesus came to give us peace peace that the world doesn't know and understand and even when things are really difficult we can have that sense of peace if we know him and trust him and look to him so you're welcome to either stand or sit, whatever you prefer, and um, we'll sing this one together when peace like you.
He's going to come and lead us in prayer. Amen. Before um, I lead us in prayer, um, I just want to alert you to the uh, graphic at the back. Pray As You Go is our new sermon series, as Elaine alluded to earlier. And uh, for the next five or six weeks, we are going to be praying. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Just you and me. We're going to be praying. Just you and me. All right. Um, Really looking forward to it. It's exciting. Um, We are going to not just talk about prayer, because it's it's no point that you're having five or six sermons back-to-back talking about prayer. We've got to do it, okay? Um, And I want to just tell you or show you some of the ways, or invite you rather, to some of the different ways that we can pray together as a church, okay? So on Sunday mornings, if you missed it, it's a bit too late now, but you could make it next week Sunday, at 1020 in the annex, which is the building just to the side here, we will be, we are always praying, right? Hands up if you've ever attended that prayer meeting at 1020, Wonderful. Is there room for some more? Yes. Okay. So you are more than welcome to join with us and pray before service starts. They always pray for me, and that's why the sermons are just so amazing. (laughs) I mean, it's just phenomenal. Anyway, (laughs) did you pray for Gita this morning? Yeah. See? So Gita's going to knock it out of the park. Just you wait and see. Um, And uh, another way that you can pray with us is online. Okay, so we have a a Zoom prayer meeting every Tuesday at 9.30. Hands up if you've ever attended that one. All right, I see John's hand. I see Frank. I see Colin's hand. Okay, so another great way, if if you're not comfortable in person, you could meet with us online. And you can find out about that um, from myself or one of the elders or online. Uh, You can find out the link to that prayer meeting. There's more. Tonight, uh, Families in Faith. Uh, we, there will be a prayer meeting at the back here. Who's coming to that? 6.30 tonight. One person. Wonderful. Okay. Oh, we've got a few more things. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. No pressure. Uh, who is coming? So that's, that's uh, going to be a, a prayer meeting that has started a couple of months ago, um, uh, praying for our family members and for um, friends um, to come to this amazing relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so I think uh, that is... Um, no, there's one more. Oh, there's one more. Now, this is the moment where some of you will be like, yeah, I quite like D, but then he says this, and I'm like, oh, no, I don't like D anymore. <laughs> I've kind of gone off this, Pastor. This, <laughs> if you haven't gone off me already, uh, this is, it's too late then, but um, if, um, yeah, starting tomorrow, we are going to be praying right here in church. I've just felt very convicted that, like I said, it's not just about talking about prayer, but it's actually about doing it. So this starting tomorrow morning, uh, we are going to be praying from Monday through to Friday. And we're going to do it for five weeks. I think it's five or, five or six weeks, I think because we've got COP26 in there as well. So we're going to do it for about six weeks. 
This is six in Asia, by the way. Okay, so six weeks we're going to be praying in this building, and we're going to start tomorrow at. Do you want to hear what time it's going to be? You're going to love this. Six thirty a.m. Oh yeah, it's going to be awesome. 6.30 a.m., we are going to be praying in here, okay? So if you are able and willing, if you have any desire whatsoever to pray with us, please come. Please do not feel compelled or pressured, okay? Um, it's totally open and free uh, to those that would like to come and join in. Okay, so from 6.30 a.m. tomorrow, we are going to be praying in this building, and you are more than welcome to come, okay? The following week, we're going to be praying in the evening, <laughs> At about, I think it's about 7, 7, is it 7 or 7.30, did we say? I think it's 7.30. But this will all be on the, uh, online, on the website, um, for you to check it out. But if you are welcome, if, if you're welcome, if you're interested, please do join us, okay, to pray here tomorrow at 6.30. We're going to be praying only for about three hours, guys. It's not, it's not long. It's not long. Uh, it's not long, all right? You can do it. Okay, if they did it in the Old Testament, <laughs> no, no. We'll be praying for about probably about 20, 30 minutes, okay? But what we're going to do is we're going to go through the Lectio 365 app. Anyone heard of that? Yeah, it's a prayer app by Pete Gregg and the 24-7 the prayer, prayer team. So we're going to be going through that um, together and then also praying individually. So you are more than welcome to join us for Pray As You Go in the mornings, 6.30, starting tomorrow. Okay, now let's pray. Father... <laughs> I have no idea what people are thinking just now. Um, maybe they're thinking, yeah, I like this pastor, but until he started talking about all this prayer early morning stuff, it's a bit too kind of regimental for me. Um, whatever the thoughts, Lord, would you cause our minds to be fixed on you, fixed on you, King Jesus, and you alone, the author and the perfecter of our faith. We love you, Lord. And indeed, this is why we're here, because you loved us first and have drawn us into your heart, into your heart of love and your unconditional love for us. And Lord, there is no limit to your love, no boundaries with your love. Your love doesn't run dry or give up on us, and neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation is able to separate us from that love that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Teach us to love our planet as your agents and ministers of reconciliation. May we not be silent on issues just because they do not impact us directly. As the effects of climate change increase and extreme weather causes devastation to lives and livelihoods, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would convict our hearts of our own personal greed consumerism, and selfish lifestyles. Fill us with the fruits of the Spirit, kindness, goodness, self-control. Empower us to seek to be a part of the solution and not the noise or the problem. Lord, we pray for our government, our government leaders, both nationally and locally, and ask that you will grant them wisdom and a commitment to justice. Whilst we are subject to the governing authorities, we know that there is no authority that you have not established by your sovereign grace. Give us grace, especially in parts of the world where freedoms and benefits and a vaccination program are non-existent. Selah. Father, your word invites us to pray in faith for our loved ones and for those that are sick. So we bring to you Andrew and Sheena, Steve and Margie, Andy and Marjorie, Anne Cannon and the Wilson family as they prepare to um, celebrate and give thanks for Andy Wilson's life on Thursday. Lord, by your spirit, draw near, ushering in comfort and healing as we fix our eyes, as we turn our eyes on you and you make us new. Church, feel free to add the names of those that you care for and want to pray for just now. Just add their names to the prayer. Dan. Lucas. For our church 
as we transition from one sermon series to another, we ask that we would know your grace and mercy unchanging. Fill us with faith as we hear your word, Lord God. Open the eyes of our hearts to see and encounter the glorious blessings and the riches of the gospel. In Christ, we have forgiveness for sin. In Christ, we are put into right relationship with God. We have been adopted into God's family and we are a royal priesthood. In Christ, we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of all truth. In Christ alone, our hope is found. You are our light. You are our hope. You are our song. Father, we bless Gida, and um, I want to thank you for the sister that she is to me, for the industrious mother that she is, and wife that she is, and there's so many caps that she wears so well. We ask that you would fill her with your spirit, Lord, just now. We ask that you would anoint her, Lord, to preach the good news this morning. Give her boldness and strength and a deep-seated joy as she shares with us today. To the glory of your great and awesome name, we pray, the only name given unto men by which we may be saved, the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 I've got Ailey to come up and read your, your passage for you. <laughs> okay, Ailey, you ready? Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received, or heard from me, or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. No. I don't know how to, oh, I'm here. Hello. Hi, lovely to see all your faces. Um, I'm going to start with a poem just to um, settle my nerves a little bit. And um, our friend Sue sent me this during the week, and it's by my favourite American poet, Mary Oliver. So listen to this. I worried a lot. Will the garden grow? Will the rivers flow in the right direction? Will the earth turn as it was taught? And if not, how shall I correct it? Will I ever be able to sing? Because even the sparrows can do it, and I am, well, hopeless. Is my eyesight fading? Or am I just imagining it? Am I going to get rheumatism, lockjaw, dementia? And finally I saw that worrying had come to nothing and I gave it up and I took my old body and I went out into the morning and sang. Isn't that lovely? So there's the solution. We're going to go out into the morning and we're going to sing. But this week as we begin our new teaching series on prayer as we go, and I think we've been really sensing an awakening in the prayer life at Tilly Baptist just in these last couple of months. And so I hope that you're as excited as I am to get started. And this Sunday we're looking at some verses which according to Amazon are the most highlighted passage in their Kindle versions of the Bible. And it's the couple of verses right in the middle of what Ailey read to us. Do not be anxious about anything but in every situation, by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And I think it speaks absolute volumes about the days that we're living through that so many people have got out their digital highlighters and have highlighted that bit in scripture because it talks about trying to find peace. Does anyone else even struggle to listen to the news these days? I can't watch it. I can barely listen to it. Um, but between this sort of relentless stream of things that we have to worry about, between pandemics and fuel poverty and climate change and 
crisis after crisis after crisis, like a swarm of wasps coming at us all at once. And I've never had so many patients come to see me about anxiety in 20 years of working as a GP, from minor to severe, from children to older folks. It feels to me as though we're in a new pandemic of mental ill health. And the COVID situation just uncovered how fragile many of our own coping strategies really are. And perhaps you've experienced some of them in your own life. I know I've had more than my share of anxiety in the last couple of years, and not just when standing up to preach. So let's turn to these well-loved and much highlighted verses from Paul's letter um, to his friends in Philippi. Oh, oh my batteries are fading. I'll keep going. I'll keep using this one. So let's turn to these well a few verses in Paul's letter to his friends in Philippi to find some answers and to discover the place that prayer has in the middle of these anxious days. And for context, Paul's writing from prison. Now that would make me feel pretty anxious. Thank you so much, Steve. That's great. Um, and he's writing to a group of friends. In this letter, he calls them dear friends, dearly loved. It's clear that these were people he cared about. And a group of Jewish folks who'd heard of the Messiah on Paul's first missionary journey and followed the Jesus way and then became the launching pad for the spread of the gospel all across Europe to finally reach us in, in the UK. And he's finishing up this letter with some really personal advice and encouragement. And then he makes this really bold statement, do not be anxious about anything. Great, thanks, Paul. Problem solved. <laughs> That's my anxiety cured. If only I'd thought of it. Some of you might have seen there's a YouTube clip um, that gets shown at conferences and for doctors of how not to do therapy. You might have seen it. I'll maybe put a link in the YouTube. And this lady walks in. Oh, here I am. This lady walks in. <laughs> I'm not going to say all the stuff that I just said. We're talking about anxiety. <laughs> and this lady walks in and sits down and he says, I'm going to charge you $5. Five dollars for the first five minutes, um, and I guarantee you'll not want to pay any more. And she tells him about her anxiety. She's frightened of being buried alive in a box. And the therapist says, "Stop it." And she says, "What do you mean?" He said, "Well, just stop being anxious. Stop having anxiety about being buried alive in a box. There you go. That'll be three dollars and thirty thirty seconds. Does that work? Has anybody ever stopped being anxious by being told?" to stop worrying, not in my experience. But then, I have heard that preached from pulpits and read it in Christian books, that good Christian folks shouldn't feel anxious about anything. Has anyone else heard that message? I have. Let me tell you, it's utter nonsense. And what that means is that as well as feeling anxious, you're now feeling guilty and condemned because not only are you an anxious person, you're a bad Christian. I'm seeing some nodding heads, it's clearly not just been me. Let's be real for a moment, because worry, concern, and anxiety are completely normal human reactions to anxiety-inducing situations, aren't they? And in fact, they're helpful. If I wasn't anxious about hitting somebody with my car, I wouldn't drive at 30 miles an hour through Tillicutri. If I wasn't anxious about climate change, I wouldn't be considering how to alter my lifestyle and how to petition politicians to make things different. If I wasn't anxious about human trafficking and the slave trade, I wouldn't be making conscious choices about what I buy and how I work with organizations to, to bring an end to that. So anxiety makes us empowered to make changes sometimes. And it can also tell us about things that are wrong in our own lives, things that we might need to look at and make a change. But sometimes, of course, it's unhelpful to our well-being. And for all sorts of complicated reasons of genetics and personality and early experiences, it can be something that overwhelms us and paralyzes us. It stops us living the life in all its fullness that Jesus promised. So please, please, please hear me this morning, whether you're in the room or online, when I say that if you're suffering from anxiety on the more severe end of the spectrum, you are not a failure as a Christian. Can I get an amen? Thank you. And you're not a failure as a human being either. If you're finding that you're overwhelmed by panic or anxiety and it's stopping you living in freedom, reach out for help. 
you are not alone. You do not have to stay in the shadows. Reach out to someone you trust in church. Go and see your doctor. Get some help. We're not supposed to do this all on our own. Now, you might expect me to have some helpful tips for managing anxiety, of course. And often as I'm giving advice at work, I'm struck by how much of it is actually what God has been saying to his creation all along. Have a listen. I might say to you, have a rest. Pretty sure God invented that when he invented the Sabbath. Genesis chapter 1. Feed your body well. Avoid numbing out with alcohol or drugs or other addictions. Spend time with your family and friends. Find a way to serve other people. Spend some time outside in creation. Pray or meditate. These are the bits of advice you'll get about staying mentally healthy. And who invented all of that? God did. And it took brain scientists millennia to come up with those bits of wisdom that God gave his children right from the beginning. But here's the bottom line. Not even the glossiest spa or the healthiest lifestyle or the best self-help book or the best yoga retreat in the world will get to the root of our deep longing for peace if it leaves out a relationship with God. Does anyone know St. Augustine's famous prayer? Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it finds rest in thee. This is the collective restlessness of humanity longing for a relationship with God. And there's something there that points us in the right direction. And so perhaps, instead of me just getting a bit cross with Paul, telling me not to be anxious, we should delve in a little bit deeper. Now, do you ever skip ahead to the end of a story? My mum, if she's watching, does this all the time. She reads the last chapter to see if it's worth her time <laughs> reading all the other chapters. I think her theory is that she's in her 70s now and life's a bit too short to waste time reading things that are going to leave you unhappy and disappointed. And she's an author herself, so I don't know if she starts at the end and works backwards. I'll ask. So today I'm going to start at the end of these couple of verses a bit of a spoiler alert ahead, and then I'm going to come back to the middle, because once you hear the ending, you're not going to be disappointed, I promise. Listen to Paul's ending. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, last week, we were on holiday in the East Nook of Fife, um, and we were walking on Kings Barnes Beach. Hands up if you've been there. Hands up if you've had one of those cheese toasties from that van. Oh my gosh, <laughs> still thinking about it. Um, it's one of those gorgeous Scottish beaches, white sand, hardly anyone else there. Our little puppy living his best life, jumping in and out of the wood, wave, waves, not woods. Everyone was relaxed and happy, no one was fighting, and I felt that deep sense of rest and contentment for at least an hour. Um, because we don't get to live our lives on Kings Barnes Beach eating cheese toasties and watching the dog play, real life comes crowding back in, doesn't it? That piece is situational. It depends on where we are and what we're doing. And Paul here is describing something much, much richer, something extraordinary, something that's high above our normal thinking, higher than we can understand. And the beauty of it is hidden slightly in the inadequacy of the English language because peace is just a faint shadow of the original word. Does anyone know the word that, that Paul's using here? Shalom. Yeah. So this deep, deep absence, not just an absence of anxiety or a moment of rest, but a deep wholeness, an integrity, a rightness, a healing of everything from our inner selves and nations and families and creation. It's that picture of Adam and Eve in the garden at the beginning of Genesis, free and at ease with God. No hint of the chaos and the pain to come. That is shalom. And we feel the lack of it, don't we? Like Augustine, we have this deep homesickness for something that we've never experienced. We have this feeling that things ought to be better, don't we? And it's why when we get to the very end, big spoiler alert, the end of Revelation, and we have that picture of a time when there's no more death, there's no more dying, there's no more crying, there's no more mourning. All is made right. I suspect I'm still going to cry. Does anyone else? 
I think I might, I might still cry. I'm all right with that. But our hearts long for that, don't they? For that wholeness, that true well-being. I know I'm not the only one that feels that. But here's the good news. Because for us and for the whole of creation, shalom is possible. Here and now. Because of the work of Jesus Christ. Listen to the words from Paul to the Colossian church in, in chapter 1. We look at the sun and we see the God who cannot be seen. We look at the sun and see God's original purpose and everything created. For everything, absolutely everything above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into existence and he holds it together right up until this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organizes it and he holds it together like a head does a body. He was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection parade, he's supreme in the end. From beginning to end, he's here, towering far above everything and everyone. So spacious is he, so expansive that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. And not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, the people and the things, the animals and the atoms get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies, all because of his death, his blood that poured down from the cross. I mean, that's poetry right there, isn't it? It's also not an anxiety management strategy. It's also not a lifestyle choice. The story of Jesus is that there's a bigger picture at play than this broken, messy world inhabited by broken, messy people. And that is because Jesus came to be one of them. And so we can find shalom. Because Jesus died and rose again, we can find our proper place in God and be whole and healthy with our broken and dislocated parts put back together. Jesus himself said it to his closest friends just before he left them, have a listen. He said, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and remind you of everything I've said to you. Peace I leave with you, peace I give you. I don't give to you as the world gives. So don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. I mean, I hope that your heart leaps at the prospect of that. I hope that as a family of God here in this place, we long to see that shalom peace in our midst. And not stopping here, but spreading out from each of us into every interaction we have in our workplaces, in our streets, in our classrooms, in our offices, in our hospitals, in our woods, in our oceans, in our mountains. So there was the spoiler. And I hope you'll forgive me for skipping to the end. But I wouldn't blame you for wondering what this has got to do with prayer and so to go there, to, to look into that, Paul's actually done their whole sermon for us, D, in 14 words. So we can, we can stop, I think. But 14 <laughs> words. In between, the do not be anxious, and here comes Jesus with peace. And he says, listen, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So I think he has four key things to say to us this morning, and don't worry, they're brief. I think he's saying to us that prayer is about relationship and not ritual, that prayer is for every situation, that prayer is where we bring our broken hearts, and that prayer calls us into forgiveness, into thanksgiving. So first of all, prayer is about relationship and not ritual. Now I know that Dee's joking about getting up at 6.30 in the morning, you can't seriously be expecting me to get up at 6.30 tomorrow morning. You're joking, right? He's deadly serious. He's deadly serious. If we want a relationship with someone, we spend time with them, don't we? Um, we don't have a monopoly on prayer, do we? Um, every gathering of human beings around the world has its own form of prayer. From prayer flags and mountaintops, prayer wheels, altars, incense, candles and cathedrals. But what distinguishes the way of Jesus is that because of his death and resurrection, we don't need rites or rituals. We're invited into relationship, like that of a father and a child. 
And just remember that Jesus calls Father God, what did he call him? Abba, Daddy, Dad. It's so lovely and simple, isn't it? Now, if you haven't experienced that relationship for yourself, and you're, you're not sure where to start, why not just try talking to God like that? Nothing fancy, no special words. You don't need a flag, you don't need a candle, you don't need to crawl on your knees. Just talk to God. What's the worst that can happen? There's another often highlighted passage in the Old Testament that goes like this. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And then you'll call on me and come and pray to me and I'll listen and you'll seek me and you'll find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you. He's not hiding. And if it sounds too good to be true, please know that you're among friends here and we'd be happy to share with you our stories um, of having cried out to God in prayer and finding that God is real and present and able to help. We've got stories of experiencing God's love during times of prayer, of finding peace when we should have been overwhelmed and finding direction when we were lost. And we'd love to talk to you more about it, even to pray with you if you'd like. So just find one of us after the service or get in touch. Now secondly, we can pray in every situation. So I remember when the kids were wee, watching them take a running leap into Andy's arms as he came home from work. I mean, if they tried it now, they'd probably snap his spine, but um, they never doubted. No offense. <laughs> we won't reenact it like some weird, dirt, you know, that dirty dancing movie. Should we give it a go? No. Um, but they never doubted that dad was going to catch them. And once they were scooped up in that big hug, I would pour all the details of the day. Somebody ate a worm in the playground. Someone else got a new scooter. Somebody cut their knee and there was blood all over the floor and it was fish and chips for lunch. Anyone else's kids do that? Usually when you're trying to cook dinner or, or do something. But I love to picture Father God that way. Always ready to hold us in strong arms and delighting to listen to the stories of our day about the worms and the scooters and the things that went well and the things that didn't. Because that's how relationships grow, isn't it? We are in each other's presence and we listen and we hear. So perhaps over this month, church, we can practice being like little children again, rekindling that relationship with our Heavenly Father that's one of connection and trust and simplicity. Seems like a pretty good place to start, doesn't it? So thirdly, we can bring our broken hearts to God. And Paul uses the word petition here. Has anyone ever signed a petition? Yeah, we probably most, most of us probably have, haven't we? An online change.org or something like that, or climate change petitions or anti-slavery petitions. The reason we do that is to bring something that we're passionate about to a place of authority, isn't it? In the hopes that something will change. And like that, we can come to God with the things that weigh us down. Um, in Christianese, we call that a burden. Does anyone use that word anywhere else apart from having a burden for something? Probably not. But we bring these cries of our heart into the throne room, knowing that God is the great authority. He's higher than any king, he's higher than any queen, he's higher even than Boris Johnson. He <laughs> he's higher than any politician. He's higher and high above all those world leaders that will gather at COP26. And we trust and we believe that God can intervene, can step into our broken world and can make a difference, can bring that shalom that we long for. Does anyone remember an old Brooke Liggert Woods sort of hill song song, Hosanna? And it had that line in it, break our hearts for what breaks yours. That is frankly a terrifying prayer to pray. It's a terrifying line to sing. Because to ask God to break our hearts for the things that breaks his, that's enormous, isn't it? I mean, are we as a church family ready to have our hearts broken by the pain we see around us. And to let that heartbreak drive us to our knees to petition the great authority. Are we so burdened by situations that we're like the widow in one of Jesus' parables who would not stop pestering the judge till she got an answer? Every great revival that ever was among God's people started with people on their knees praying, didn't it? A couple of old ladies up in Lewis praying for a preacher to come to the island and revival comes. It didn't start 
in any other way, but by broken hearts coming to that great authority and asking God to do something. So are we brave enough? Can we allow ourselves to be driven to our knees with petitions on our lips for the world outside these walls, for our own families and for our own neighbours? I believe we can. I think we're made of tough stuff. And it's so wonderful, sorry, to believe that we have a God who hears and a God who answers. And then fourthly and finally, we're to be a thankful people. Here's a challenge, right? There's a lot of you not originally from Scotland in this room and watching online. I think perhaps Scottish people might have a reputation for being a bit doer, being a bit grumpy. I think it's the weather. But what other nation would have, I not bad, as one of the highest compliments you can give. How was that five-star meal? Uh, not bad. How was the new Bond film? Uh, not bad. Or if you're from Aberdeen, the word fine means the most amazing thing I've ever experienced. At my brother's wedding in this gorgeous hotel, champagne flowing, amazing food, and the Aberdonians were like, hi, that was fine. Are you fine? <laughs> Cost my dad lots of money. More than fine. There's even one Scottish comedian commented that only Glaswegians, and I can say this because I'm from Glasgow, can use the phrase, I write, as an insult. So, I means yes, right means I agree. Put them together, it means <laughs> I'm going to spit on your shoes. <laughs> so, maybe there's something inherent in Scots that we're slightly more likely to grump and complain than we are to give thanks and to celebrate. And I wonder if that translates a wee bit into our prayer lives. I mean, have you ever been at a prayer meeting where the leader says, well, I just want you to speak out prayers of thanksgiving and praise, and all you can think about is your petitions? It doesn't come naturally, but in that place of connection with the Heavenly Father, that is what will well up inside us, thanksgiving and praise. Praise as a doorway into thanks. I've got another poem from my favorite poet again, and this is her take on praying. It doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Just pay attention and then patch a few words together and don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest, but the doorway into thanks and a silence into which another voice may speak. Isn't that lovely? Prayer as a doorway into thanks. So why don't we try that? It's another place where the scientists are catching up with the wisdom of God. A few centuries and millennia too late. Because brain science has shown us that being thankful changes our actual brains. They put people in MRI scanners and they've asked them to think of things that they're thankful for. And the bits of your brain that light up stay lit up. So by entering into thanksgiving and praise we're entering into better mental health, if nothing else, that connection with God. So why not start a gratitude prayer journal instead of the lists of petitions, write the things you're thankful for? Or if you're stuck, flip open the Psalms and use some of those ancient words to find words of praise slightly better than Nabad or fine. So I hope that this season of prayer at Tilly Baptist will change us more and more into people with thankful hearts, overflowing with joy and with gratefulness for all that God has done. So thank you, friends, for your attention this morning as we've raced through just a couple of verses to kick off our season of prayer together. We started by acknowledging that this world is a bit of a mess and our lives are all too often pretty messy and pretty broken as well. And that anxiety seems to be a feature of our modern lives, even as we're longing for that deep peace and shalom. But the good news is that we're invited into a relationship with the great authority through the risen and resurrected Jesus. And we can find shalom. Our broken and dislocated parts finding their place in the great song made whole and healthy with a new song to sing. 
And that means that we have a relationship with God. That's not based on empty rituals or dead religion, but on connection and of love and of blessing. And so as we embark together on these weeks of a renewed commitment to prayer, I believe that we will see God working in our lives in new ways. Does anyone else? Yeah. And it's going to take vulnerability, and it's going to take openness, and it's going to take courage, and it's going to take trust, and it's going to take a much earlier alarm clock. But... Remember that God promises that when we seek him, he will be found. And when we find him, he finds us. And in that finding, our anxious, restless hearts find shalom, which is the peace that passes all understanding. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that it's as simple as this, that in your presence, by the power of your spirit, by the risen, resurrected Jesus, there's no ritual, there's no religion, there's no hoops to jump through, but just children talking to their father. And we pray that in this season of prayer, we would find ourselves revived, that we would find ourselves healed, that we would find ourselves strengthened and made whole. And that spreading out from here would be ripples and ripples and waves of your love and your grace and your mercy for a broken world. Lord, we pray that you would start that with us. Thank you that we have the privilege of knowing you as our Father, of being safe, of being secure in the shalom that having a relationship with you brings. And so would you bless us? And would you fill us again by your Spirit to live out these lives of faith and peace, of hope and trust and joy and thanksgiving? And all God's people said, Amen. Let's just take a, take a moment to pause um, and reflect for a couple of minutes while Gita rearranges herself and, uh, and the band settle in and then we'll sing a song together.
service to um, an end just now um, but please do feel free to worship with us and I'm going to be praying at the back uh, if you'd like to join me we'll also serve coffee and tea um, from the hatch as well but before we do that let me pray the blessing over you so may the blessing the love and the grace of God Almighty Father Son and Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. People of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord.